In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. I want to ask you to forgive me for getting a little theological during this sermon. This sermon could go two ways. Either it could be the most boring sermon you ever heard in your life, or hopefully the most enlightened one in quite a while. It only depends on if you actually have eyes on your heart. If your heart possesses eyes, it will be all the determination. Or as I say in Spanish, trayendo el corazón en la mano, carrying your heart in your hand. Or the Italian phrase, wearing your heart on your sleeve. If you have no heart, then this sermon, you can zoom out and think about whatever you want. The eternal word of the Heavenly Father in the bosom of the one divine nature and unity with the Holy Ghost, we find three subsistent relations. As we know, we too are a subsistent, that is to say, which permits me to say, I. I, me. The divine word performs the same divine actions as the Father and the Holy Ghost. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And then we find a little bit later, the word was made flesh greatest mystery of the incarnation. It is the greatest work of God outside of himself. And the reason why it's the greatest, because it involves himself. Do I dare say it? Creating himself. Very bold language. Very excessive, borderlining the madness. As God, the word of the Heavenly Father is eternal and immutable. He therefore remains what he was. But nothing prevented the word, get this, together with the Father and the Holy Ghost from creating in time a human nature. which instead of having a limited, weak ego like ours, was completely governed by his divine person. This human nature belongs to the divine person, to the subsistent person of the word, the second person of the most holy trinity. And may this point warm your heart. We're getting to the punchline of this sermon right now. Therefore, and this is what gives us all the hope in the world. Therefore, even the operations, the human operations, and the human passions of this human nature belong to the eternal word of the Father. It reminds me of the quote from St. Gregory. I think it's one of the two Gregories, either Gregory Nansiensen or Greg of Nisa, I forgot. But he says, whatever is assumed is saved, redeemed. Whatever, is, whatever the eternal word assumes upon his, himself, meaning our nature, then it's being redeemed, being saved. That's why our bodies look forward when they're laying in the grave for centuries, looking forward for the glorious resurrection from the dead. Because by the power of this principle, that the operations and the passions of the human nature of Christ 
are not united to a human person, but rather to the divine person, the only person that operates these two natures in Christ. And since the incarnation of the eternal word, the word has a twofold nature, the unique divine nature and the human nature, which is of the same quality and has the same properties as ours, this latter one of the human nature. This is the immense work, listen to this, of the excessive charity of God. That the eternal word of the Father would assume our sinful nature without sinning. Being so full of mercy for his poor creatures who had fallen into the abyss of sin, God did not hesitate to decree the redemptive incarnation of his only begotten Son. And it's in this context of all this thought on theology where we can understand a quote from the great Saint Therese of the Little Flower and her little work, the, her story, number 13. Here's a quote. Forgive me, Jesus, if I tell thee that thy love reacheth even unto folly. That's a pretty bold statement. You have to be very familiar with, his, with him to get away with that phrase. Calling our Lord almost a folly. And in the sight of such folly, what wilt thou but that my own heart should leap up to thee? End quote. As we come to the communion rail, some of us, to receive the flesh of our Lord. May the incarnate Son of God in the Holy Host serve as a gigantic magnet. A magnet. So that by his infinite love, like gravitational pull, rip me away from the slime of the earth and catch him up as the preface of Christmas Mass says, the preface. Rapiamur will be caught up, snatched up in the invisible love to cling to the royal courts and his divine thoughts and desires in immutable charity. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, amen.